Hi, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to discuss about the collection frameworks, another interface that is Q. The Q interface is designed for the Q data structure that works on the principle of first in first out or last in last out. So it means that in a queue, you can insert the element only from the one end and you can remove the element from the another end. Okay. So in this uh, video, we are, we are going to discuss and see its implementation. So basically there are two classes that uh, extends or implements the queue interface. So first one is the linked list class. Now we have seen that linked list class in also works for list, but it is uh, also has the functionality to work as for the queue data structure. And we have another class that is array DQ. So we will see that too. So let's start with the first implementation that is linked list implementation. So we take queue interface reference variable so that we can access all the methods of the queue. So queue integer, uh, let's name it queue new linked list. Okay. Now let's add. Now in while adding the elements into it, there are two methods. One is add method and second is offer. Now the difference is that if uh, there is no space in the queue, the space will be created and no exceptions will be thrown. Whereas if you use offer method, so if the queue is full and if you still add, an exception will be thrown. So it's preferred, preferable according to the situation, use the methods. So let's add add method, add 12. Next add. 21, let's add 34 and let's add 65. Okay, now we print this queue. Let's see what we get. So we have got 12, 21, 34, 65. Now this may seem like similar as list, but we have to use the functionalities of queue. So this is the first thing that we have printed the queue. Now there is one method known as peak. So it's queue dot peak. Now peak method just provides the information of the element that is present at the uh, at the first end of the queue. Okay. So we can assign this as i. And if we print this, we get 12. So 12 was added at first. So we get the first element that is added at first. There is one more method which is known as q.poll. Now what does this poll method does? Poll method retrieves the element and removes from it. So first, so basically, now if you, after uh, invoking this method, if you print Q, you will see, now it is 21, 34, 65. So you see that first 12 is removed. So because, why 12 is removed first? Because 12 is getting added first. So we add 12 first, therefore we remove the 12 first so you and you cannot access or you cannot remove any element or add any element other than from the start it, it will get appended like that okay great so moving on there are similar methods for q one is element now element also method also is same as peak but it will throw exception if the queue is empty. Okay. And there is one more method which is similar to poll and that is remove. Now this will 
is also same as pole, it will also remove it. But if Q is empty, it will throw the exception. So you have to remember these three things. It's not that we cannot use these methods. It's just that it depends on our requirement. If our requirement is such that we have to restrict the user once the queue is full, then we can use offer. We can use the offer method. If our if our uh, requirement is no, if the queue is full, we want to uh, increase the size of the queue so that more elements can come. Then we use add method. So this is similar. Okay. Now let's see another implementation of queue. And that is Q, let's take off integer, Q equal to new array DQ. Now array DQ has, special, has the same methods as we have seen above. Now why I am just uh, stating this one? Though it has some functionality different, but it contains most of the functionalities of the Q it has. So it has Q dot add, we can add methods like 12. We can add 43 and we can add uh, 36 okay and we can add 90. Now we can print it so we get array dq 12, 43, 36 and 90 okay I just comment it out so that now you can easily see the result okay. So 12, 43, 36 and 90. You can see that we have inserted this, this in the queue. Now, it also has the same method if you see the library. Now, you may wonder whether you have to remember these methods. No. Basically, you have to understand all the data structures that are, that how they work and what are some of the basic operations on them. The collection framework, the library is there for you. You don't have to memorize it. You just have to understand how things work. Okay. So in the previous two videos also, you just have to understand how this works, how set works. And here you have to understand, we are understanding how the queue works and what are its different way of implementation. Now array DQ uses internally an array. Whereas linked list implementation uses internally linked list. So that's the difference. Okay, now uh, because linked list take more memory than array to, to be getting implemented, we use array because it is efficient to use and the main thing of array, array DQ is that we can use it as a queue as well as we can use it as a stack. So this is one of the uh, most advantage thing of array deck class. Uh, sorry for my wrong pronunciation. It is array deck, not array DQ, but yeah, you can say that nobody cares that much. So it's fine. Okay. So yeah. So if you see that you, we have poll, we can poll it and we will okay, have it. If we, if we now print it, so the first added element will get removed and we get 43, 36 and 90. Okay. Similarly, if you uh, say peak, so let's just print this. Uh, okay. If you print it, we get 43 because the peak just retrieves the element or just displays the element at the top of the or at the end of the queue, right? So these are the various methods that are present. More methods are there. If you see the library, you will get it. So all these are standard methods which are present here. Now, uh, you may ask how can we use uh, it as stack? So we will discuss stack in another video and then we will use array deck class to implement the stack data structure. For now, we have seen how Q data structure works. Now, one thing you may be seeing in all the, in the last two videos as well as this, we are not uh, using 
for each loop or any loop to iterate the elements. So we will cover the topic of iterating elements in the collection framework separately because we have a lot of methods to iterate and we have a lot of uh, various uh, ways in which we can iterate the elements depending on what our requirement is and what version of Java we are using. Okay, so I hope you have understood this Q data structure uh, and its uh, implementation and you have got a basic idea of what the queue is and what and how it works okay in the upcoming video we will cover more interfaces with respect to the collection framework till then bye